DC Steve. Oh, here he is. Chiefs DC Spagnolo. Let me go back to get into my place. A spag Nolo. There. That's Chiefs DC. Right there. And um glad to be here to help you out. Thank you. Morning, Coach. How you doing? I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I, I can't see anybody here, so it's a little bit different for me. I'm, I'm talking to myself, it looks like, because I'm seeing only me on the screen, but happy to happy to answer your question. Let's go first to Herbie TLB. Oh, hold on one second. Now go. Oh. Go ahead, Herbie. Uh, hi, I'm not Herbie. You get a familiar face for your first question. Well, hey, I'm Herbie. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> I usually get to see you, Herbie. I can't see you right now. Uh, <laughs> Hey, uh, Brad Deesh was telling us after the championship game that if you if they had a do-over with the draft last year, you could make an argument that the British need would be a first-round pick. How fortunate are you to have Legereus Need, and when did yeah. you know you had something special in him? Well, listen, I think I've spoken about this before, Herb, um, but I fell in love with LJ just watching his college tape, um, and I was kind of a little bit shocked. And, you know, you go around and ask around to scouts and other people they didn't have him i thought i was missing something um but i always liked him when he came here first in training camp of course we had the off season it was a little bit different uh but even in the meetings we could tell he was a cerebral guy played a lot of positions in college you know which led us to believe that he could handle things mentally our goal was to get him playing a corner he surfaced as the guy to take over for Bashad Brewin. uh you know he played those first two or three games, I think he got hurt in the Baltimore game. And then it was in the, you know, when he was injured uh, and Prashad and C-Dub were playing pretty good at corner. You know, we were sitting there saying, how do we get our best 11 on the field? We thought LJ was one of them. So that's when we decided to move him to nickel. But he's out there playing nickel, still learning on the run. Uh, he didn't have any, the luxury of any training camp snaps uh, at nickel. And he's done a really pretty good job. Let's go next to Adam Kilgore. Go ahead, Adam. Steve, how are you? Great, Adam. Um, there's been like a, a lot of discussion um, over the last couple of years about how you know RPOs and the spread offense and different offensive trends have come into the NFL and changed the game, but probably less public discussion about like what defensive trends have emerged to like, counteract that. And I wonder for you, like what what's different about NFL defense? in today's game as compared to, you know, even two or two, two or five years ago that, um, you know, stands out to you. Yeah. I mean, I, listen, things defensively probably all are a product of what's going on on the offensive side of the football. The, the one thing, um, from the offense that's made a little bit tougher defensively, I think is that I see that offensive, uh, schemes have a, a lot more pass protections. Um, there was a time, listen, I go back to when Jim Johnson and I were together in Philadelphia and I, I thought he was great at scheming uh, blitzes for the protections we were seeing that just weren't at as, as many. Nowadays, I think they just have so many, it makes it difficult for you to, you know, beat a protection. So that's one thing. Um, I don't know, maybe um, defenses are a little bit more multiple in coverage. Uh, because we're seeing so much pass, these, these young guys are coming to us from college where they're seeing a lot of pass game. Uh, that you got to do a little bit more. You can't just sit in one thing. I believe quarterbacks, offensive coaches, offensive coordinators are too smart. They're going to find the weakness in any coverage. And every coverage has a weakness. Um, and in the offenses, they see that. And if you only sit in one thing, they're going to identify it. So maybe multiple coverages and not being able to do some things uh, blitz-wise that you normally would have been able to do just because of the multiple protection schemes. We'll go next to Susie Colbert. Go ahead, Susie. Susie. Hi, Steve. How are you? Yesterday, I got all dressed for this. Today, I'm like, no, nah, I don't need to. <laughs> You're right. That's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> so, like, a lot of your, your giant Super Bowl champs have talked about this and, and Sorensen today. Just, just how good you are at the in-game adjustments. But I just wonder, when you're going against Brady, like, does that, do you have to take it to a whole different level? That's a good point, Susie. You do. Uh, he's a step ahead of everything. I mean, every every film clip that you put on, you know, he's putting their guys in the right defense. That's always the challenge when you go against what I call a cerebral quarterback. And we know Tom is, is like that. He has total control 
Uh, he gets them out there in time to, to change things. We're going to have to be really good on the back end, not to show him things, or as we say, don't let him read our mail. Because uh, if he can read our mail, he knows exactly what to do. Um, I got. I tell you what, Susie. The, you know, you can only do as much as your players allow. Um, so when Dan says that, or some of the other players, I, part of that is because you have trust in the guys that you can do something on the sideline and trust that they're going to get it done. Because that's not always easy. I mean, a lot of coaches, myself included, don't like to run anything on game that you haven't practiced. Sometimes you have to. Um, and we may have to do that in this game, but we're going against one of the best. I mean, a guy that can change anything at any time. So he's probably going to be right. We just got to hopefully make a few more plays than they do. We'll go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Steve. From that that week week twelve tape of you guys and and more comparing it to what they've recently done and, and put on some film. In what ways and what you're willing to share have you seen them taking some steps in, in just the the nine or ten weeks? And what are you preparing for now that maybe you didn't see in that first game? Yeah, it's not a lot of change. What I see is you call it synergy, call it chemistry, call it whatever you want. I mean, they're clicking on all cylinders and like it doesn't matter whether it's defensively or offensively once you start having success and it snowballs and that's what i've seen them do everybody gets confident and look you got you got the best quarterback in nfl history playing and i'm sure all of those players as they started to have success moving the football winning games and they've got tom brady i mean it just snowballs and i just see a, a unit that's clicking uh, great chemistry you know with a great leader We'll go next to O.C. Umanyora. Go ahead, O.C. Oh, my God. <laughs> O.C. O.C. Well, well, it. well, well. What do we have here? <laughs> this is not right, O.C. You're supposed to be putting pads on. You're not supposed to be on the other end of the Oh, mic. man. I know, I know, I know, man. Hey, Spanks, how are you, man? You doing all right? I'm, I'm doing great, man. Look, great hearing your voice. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, listen, listen, I'm not there to see you face to face, but we got to continue our tradition that me and Justin will always continue. And I got to ask you right now, you're I not know scared you're of the <laughs> No, we don't get scared. You know that. You guys used to tease me about that. That's okay. I took it every time. If it got us going, that was a good thing. Absolutely, man. Now, obviously, um, you have some really good football players, man. Some outstanding defensive linemen there. Chris Jones is there, who I like a lot as a player. Frank Clark, really good football player. Yeah. Spags, that, that ain't Michael Strahan and Justin Tuck and O.C. Mayor now. So what are you going to do to dial up the pressure to get the Tom Brady, man, that you know affects this guy pretty well? Yeah, you know, O.C., I mean, every game is different. I mean, the game has changed a little bit from when we played back there in 07. Uh, the quarterback we're playing is still the same. He's still every bit as good. Um, it may be a little bit different. We'll, we'll try pressure-wise and all that, but I just think we've got to be – uh, on point with coverage wise and see what we can get with our guys out of a four man rush. I mean, you know, we've, we've called upon our D line to do that in other games. They've done a nice job. The one thing about Tom now, I was just talking, I don't know if you heard it, OC on the on other question I had, I just think protection wise, there's so multiple, it's hard to, you know, overload or do certain things that we used to be able to do uh, way back when, um, now, maybe he can't get to those now. I think Tom's really good at identifying things and emotions, and he gathers all that information, and then, you know, he spits it out and puts them in the right place. So it's going to be man-on-man. Man. It's going to be if we can have, you know, out of our 11 versus their 11, can we have more guys on point every play than they do? And if we do that, we got a good chance of being successful. If it's the other way around, then it'll be a, it'll be a tougher day. Nice one, man. Last last thing, man, Steve, last thing, because I, I need some of your advice here. You know, um, I, I'm always, always rooting for you, man. You know this, man. I love you to death, and I hope I hope you I hope you guys win. Um, you got Dave Merritt down there, uh, Sam Madison, all my guys, so, so I'm really rooting for you guys. But also, on Tampa Bay, we got JPP, who's a good friend of mine, yeah. and I, I spoke to Tom Brady yesterday for the first time ever, and I kind of fell in love with him, Steve, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of rooting for them, too. So tell me what I Give me some advice here, Steve. You want me to try to steer you in the KC direction? Is that what you're looking for? I, I, no, tell you I what. just need to know. <laughs> well, listen, no, she, listen we're, I'm proud to be in the game uh, going against a guy yeah. like Tom Brady. And I think both teams 
feel like we're proud to be going against each other. I mean, it's two really good football teams, two great head coaches, you know, go on down the line with everything. And it'll be exciting. I mean, the competition is what we all thrive for. Uh, and there'll be a lot of competitors out there on the field this Sunday. Excellent, man. Steve, let me hit you up after, man. Thank you so much. Okay, was, you got it, man. All right, much love. All right. Thank you. We'll go next to Jason Leisure with the Chicago Sun-Times. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, Steve, I'm just I'm curious about the uh, autonomy you have as a defensive coordinator and how much Andy is involved with that, or does he just kind of let you go as basically head coach of the defense? And how you, how you evaluate that type of job versus actually being the head coach? As far as for you personally, how much you like yeah. each one versus the other? Well, I can tell you this, Jason, that there's, uh, I've, the best guy in the world to work for is Andy Reid. Uh, I'm a very fortunate uh, person to have the job that I have. Andy's terrific. Um, he lets his coaches coach. I mean, he does that on both sides of the ball. I mean, obviously, he's deeply involved offensively. Um, and he has a lot of trust in our whole staff. I mean, this is not a one-man show defensively. We got we got a great staff, guys that I've done around before OC mentioned a few of them um but got you know Brendan Daly and Matt House and Britt Reed and a whole bunch of guys Terry Braden Alex Winningham Connor Embry uh again it's not a one-man show but Andy has been great and let us all do our job we find a way to get through the work week I mean I keep him in tune to things that we're thinking about doing um and it's just a pleasure to work for him I mean quite frankly uh, when Sunday rolls around or any Sunday rolls around all we want, all, all of us want to do is not disappoint the head coach. We, we believe that's so strongly in Andy. No. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Steve. Good to see you, man. Good night. I, I know that there's been, um, you know, times in the past where you and Brendan Daly have worked so well together, particularly in matchups facing Tom Brady, especially these last two years. Just um, in terms of your guys' synergy, how much does – that do you believe impact what you guys are able to do with the players on the field, knowing obviously a, a, an opponent like Brady? You mean in terms of Brendan having been there in New England? Nate? Yeah, yeah, you guys working together back in, in St. Louis as well. Yeah, no, that, listen, it's it's very very helpful. I mean, Brendan, I, I lean on him a lot. Uh, he's still, I think he's the best D line coach in the league, um, but I'm a little bit biased. Um, but he brings a perspective and an insight, having been with Tom, that I think helps a little bit. He can share that with the players. Uh, and his expertise in D-line play, I mean, I think he does such a great job with our guys. He always has them ready to play. And listen, this game begins up front. I mean, not just the Super Bowl, any any football game. And uh, we think we have one of the best guys uh, running the show with our guys up front. And we've got some good players there. So hopefully that'll help us do what we got to do on Sunday, which is try to find a way to have Tampa Bay not score a lot of points. Hmm. We'll go next to Torres Paylor. Go ahead, Torres. Hey, Steve, how are you doing today? Great, Tress. Hey, um, got a two-part question for you. The first part is you sh you've shown a desire to blitz to a pretty stunning degree. Um, and I'm curious, like, if you've ramped up the blitz because, like, you know your offense is, like, extremely potent <laughs> and if maybe you give one up, it's like, <laughs> that's a good, That's a good, that's a good insight there. Uh, I think I got a follow-up. Go ahead. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. I, I don't know that when we're out there, because, you know, listen, we're all talking as a staff as to what we should do the next series and what should we do next time we get them in third down. So we're, it's a collaboration of guys. Um, but it's an interesting thought you bring up. You know, it's kind of like go after them now. If they beat us, that's okay. Patrick will go out there and get some <laughs> points for us. I mean, it, it, but I, I'm not, I can't say that we think that way only because, listen, defensively, we take a lot of pride in our job, which is to limit the amount of points allowed. And that's our number one job. Uh, it's not about stats and you know what they get and what they don't get. It's keep them out of the end zone. Uh, if they get down, then make them uh, kick field goals. And whatever play we're calling, we're playing because we we think that's the best call at the time to to do that. And listen, we'll see how this game goes. I and mean, again, going against one of the greatest, and you can't do one thing too much, or you know he'll he'll find a way to make you pay for it. Second part of this, Steve, if you win on Sunday, you this would be your third Super Bowl ring as a defensive coordinator. I know you aren't getting ahead of yourself. I get that. But either way, either way, that's really strong, and you're still a very spry 61. You, <laughs> I appreciate not, you saying that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. I couldn't 
I didn't know you. I was like, you're 61? Like, but do, do, A, do you want to be a head coach again? And B, and I think this is important, how are you a better coach now than in 2009 and 2011? Yeah, well, first of all, I would love that, that challenge again. I think anybody that's involved in this business uh, has a lot of pride and would like to challenge them again. And, and, and the second question, I believe that people in any business, in any walks of life, um, gain more perspective and more value to how to do a job when you've already done it and maybe you've made some mistakes. I mean, look, at a long way we do that. I've done it as a defensive coordinator, and as long as you're willing to learn from prior mistakes, I just think that makes you a better uh, better at whatever it is you do, whether it's computers or whatever whatever that job might be. I just think there's a value in experience. And so, listen, I will say this. Having answered that question, I do believe I have the best job in America. And if the head coaching thing never works out, I'm okay with that. Should it come across my table, it would be a great challenge. Love to do it. Would you say, like, quickly, just briefly, just – what did you learn the first time as a coach? Um, and I, well, I can tell you this. I, I won't go into all of them, but I, I have a list that I've kept. Uh, it might be four or five pages um, oh. that I would reflect on here. And then it's helped me even in being a defensive coordinator. I mean, uh, whether it's dealing with players, whether it's dealing with the situation, schedules, timing, all that. I mean, there's always some little tidbit you can learn from. And when I say mistakes, it might just be something that we decided to do or change that maybe we shouldn't have. So there's just value and experience. Thank you. We'll go next to Vahe Gregorian. Go ahead, Vahe. Hey, Steve. Hi, Vahe. Just uh, along the lines of what Therese was asking, I, I wonder how much better equipped, in hindsight, you, you feel um, having had that year off uh, and whether, whether you actually had your own office at NFL Films. And I'll have one follow-up after that. Yeah, that, listen, I've been asked that quite a bit. Um, I, I would recommend it to anybody. Nobody, really, nobody wants to be out of work. There's a fear you're never going to get back in. Um, but there's a lot of value to looking at anything big picture. When you can sit back, you know, kind of relax a little bit, take a deep breath, and then look at things, I think you see things differently. And that's how I felt in in my situation, I enjoyed it. It gave me a lot more time with my wife, which I love, because this business can be tough on that. So it was a little bit of a deep breath and a break uh, for my, my wife and I, and it, and it worked out really good. And I was very fortunate in the fact that, you know, Andy asked me to come here. Um, you know, I think to, to me that was just all God putting me in the right situation. So I'm very, very grateful for that. And Steve, do you... Um do you literally, I don't know if you do this or not, do you literally keep a book on on various adversaries, uh, including perhaps Tom Brady? I mean, do you have your, yeah. your own your own Tom Brady notebook? Yeah, believe, it or, believe it or not, even though I'm not tech savvy, it's actually in a little computer file or something. But I've, listen, I've done that way back. I, I have stuff from 1999 when I was working with Jim, and it's really on offenses or offensive coordinators. Um, probably has no value now because the game has changed so much. But yeah, certainly we, we have libraries. I think every good coach does that. And there's a library on whether it's a scheme or a coach or a team or, or a player. We try to do that, yeah. Thanks, Steve. You got it. We'll go next to Neil Reynolds. Go ahead, Neil. Hi, Coach. Neil Reynolds from Sky Sports in the UK. Okay, um, Two-part question. Uh, what has pleased you the most about the way your defense has played down the stretch? And then what are the challenges when you face an offense that has so many different weapons? Yeah, um, listen, I've been proud of our guys since I've gotten here. Um, I just love working with them. It's a terrific group, a lot of character guys, and I think it begins with character. And we have that even through the rough times. And we had a few bumps along the way this year and through all the, you know, the COVID that we've been going through. I think our guys have been terrific. Um, I hope that we can get better. I do not believe we've played our best game yet. I'm hoping that shows up on Sunday. Uh, our guys every week are real critical of themselves, which is a great thing to have. So even though we might win a few football games and do decent defensively, I think our guys look at it and say we need to get better here or, or there, and that comes with great player leadership, which we have. Um, I forgot the second part of your question. Sorry, Katie, I was just unmuted me. Yeah, the second part was just when you place an offense that has so many different weapons, that challenge, because you can't just take one person away. 
No, you, you make a great point. Look, I've always felt that when you face this kind of offense with, like you say, a lot of weapons, you just have to mix it up. You can't sit in one thing. Tom's too good. Uh, he's going to figure out what you're trying to do, what you're trying to take away, and he's going to expose you somewhere else. So I'm hoping that if anything, we can just mix it up enough that, you know, we can be one or two steps ahead of Tom on a couple of plays here and there, and there'll be su successful ones for us. Because in this game, you know, having been in the middle of it, it might just be a play here or a play there that makes all the difference in the world. We'll go ne next to Mark Cantanzaro, New York Post. Hey, Spags, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. How are you? Good. You getting snow out there? Uh, we got about a foot and a half. Oh, like man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, stay safe. Thank you. Um, hey, I'm just, I wanted to, two questions for you. One is, uh, is about uh, um, Tyron Matthew and just kind of his value and, and, and what, what makes him so special and, and, and your, your ability to move him around the way you do. And I have one more after this. Yeah, listen, that's easy. That's an easy answer. What makes it so he's passionate and he's intelligent. I mean, the guy loves football and he gets football. You know, it's one thing for people in this world to have a, a real high IQ or SAT score. It's another thing to get football. It's unique. And, and he's unique that way. He has a feel for it. Uh, he's instinctive. And that, when you have a guy like that, uh, you need to use him. And when you have a guy like that, he makes the other guys around him better. And our guys have great confidence in Tyron and what he can do and how he can help them, whether it's communication uh, from one thing to another. So we love having him. We have a couple other guys, a bunch of other guys like that. And so far, we've been, you know, gelling together pretty good. And just as a follow, and I congratulate you in advance, uh, and wish you luck in advance on a Sunday, but uh, um, Juan Thornhill not being able to play the game last year, going through what he did so late in the season. How how happy are you for him to kind of, yeah. you know, and what was that like for him in your eyes last year not to be a part of it? Yeah, I'm sure it was very disappointing for him. Alex Okafor was another one that uh, was hurt last year during this time. I'm really proud of Juan. Uh, it's been an up and down year for him. He's been dealing with that ACL injury. Um, and But he's really come on. I thought he had a great game. Uh, a week ago against Buffalo in a really key time. I'm hoping he could do the same thing uh, this coming week. But we need Juan. We need all our guys. But uh, he is one of those guys that's gone through an up-and-down season. He's really come on strong toward the end. Real proud of him. Thanks, Peg. Mm -hmm. We'll go next to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Good, Sam. How are you? Good. Um, I just wanted to ask you a quick thing on Frank Clark. It seems like every time we talk to him, he, he talks about getting out of the mindset of just wanting sacks and sacks. And yeah. I'm wondering what else does he bring to you guys outside of just, just rushing the passer? Well, listen, he brings energy. Uh, we know that. And I think our guys feed off of that. And, you know, when, you know, when you're dealing with any quarterback, it's, it's affecting the quarterback. It's not necessarily sack. I mean, we'd love to have a bunch of sacks. But that's, that's not going to happen. That's not the number one goal. The number one goal is to affect the quarterback to the point that he doesn't complete the pass or get it downfield. And Frank does that. There are, there are a lot of things that go unnoticed um, from all of our pass rushers. Um, just being relentless in their pass rush, if they make the quarterback move in the pocket, if they get him off balance a little bit. I thought we did that a bunch uh, a week or two ago. Uh, against Buffalo in that we got Josh Allen to move his feet. He was kind of throwing off his back foot, and that's helpful. It helps the guys in the back end, and they appreciate it. So Frank's been great that way. Um, I know the guys love having him. I love having him. He's unique. My wife gets the biggest kick out of him. He's got pictures. She saw one the other day. You know, he gets his hair all over the place, and he looks wild and crazy. She likes those types, so we're glad we got him. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Yeah. We'll go next to Sarin Petro. Go ahead, Sren. Hey, Coach. Uh, thanks for the time. The the matchup a second time, right? Uh, you do it all the time in divisional games. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit different in the sense it's not a team you see year after year after year. But yeah. um, you know, how much uh, you know can can teams really change? I mean, how how much and how much do you have to say? Do you, do you have to be careful of, okay, we did that last time, so they'll be ready for it, so now let's do yeah. something different this time. How, how much is that chess match uh, involved here? It's a great question, um, and it's a balance thing. I've kind of been going through it a lot yesterday and a lot on Sunday. Listen, it's two weeks that a coach gets to look at a, an opponent, and that's good and bad. Um, 
because what we have to weigh is feeding our guys too much and then it tangles up their feet. You know, you clutter their mind, you tangle up their feet. We don't want to do that. We want to let our guys just go and play. So we're trying to weigh that balance, just feed our guys what we think we need uh, to win the football game. And, you know, in looking at what we did last time, I mean, there'll be some of the same things because we do what we do. And then there's hopefully a couple of wrinkles in there that throw them off. I'm sure they're doing the same thing. I mean, they've got things that they did against us. They Listen, let's not forget, uh, they had a really good fourth quarter. I mean, Tom got them cranking there at the end. And thank God we didn't have to go back out there. You know, the, our offense kind of they kept the ball for the last four minutes. So we're certainly aware that, you know, this offense can put up a lot of points. And uh, we want to find a way to make that not happen. Let's go next to Clarence Hill, Fort Worth Star uh, Chosen. Can you tell me, Anthony Hitchens, you know, how much has he grown in that system coming from Dallas, and what does he bring to your defense? I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm so glad you brought up uh, Anthony Hitchens. I, I love Anthony. He He's the glue, you know, him and Tyron. I mean, those guys are the glue, and Anthony's in the middle. Uh, we ask him to do a lot as a Mike linebacker. I believe that the Mike linebackers should be running the show, and he embraces it. I mean, you ought to see the notebook he has by the time Wednesday morning comes. Well, you know, we the guys have Monday off. We come in shortly on Tuesday, and Wednesday is really when we gear up uh, during our normal work week. And I go into that Wednesday meeting, unit meeting, and I look down, and, and he's right next to me uh, as I present my meeting. And he's got pages of notes he's already taken. But that's the kind of guy that you want in the middle of your defense. Uh, I love him as a person. Uh, I love him as a player, and I know I, I, the rest of our guys feel the same way. I, he gets so, he, he just has the unique ability to get along with all the groups, the D-line, the linebackers, the DBs, and that's a unique quality to have uh, in any football player, and I think it's really important for the Mike linebacker, and I think he does a terrific job of that. Let's go next to John Crick, Toronto's son. Go ahead, John. Hey, Coach. Hi, John. Andy, coming off, his team's coming off uh, a bye or with extra time to prepare, are, have a great record. What does he do differently, and what does he know that others don't? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. It's probably one answer that Andy should answer. Um, listen, this is what I know about Andy. He has a great feel for his players and his team as to what they need or don't need, and should you work them? Are they underworked? Are they overworked? Um he has a great feel for it. He knows when to pull off and when to, you know, push down a little bit. And I think that's part of, you know, when you get a long stretch of time, whether it's a bye week or a two week Super Bowl, I think Andy just knows um, his team well. He's uh, aware of it. And I think he just gives them up the right way to get them ready to play a game. We'll go next to Len Jennings. Go ahead, Len. Uh, Coach, uh, how are you doing today? Great. Uh, just, you know, you were talking about feeding your players. Speaking about feeding your players, uh, Chris Jones has been a fan of your wife's cooking. <laughs> Michael Strang has been a fan of your wife's cooking. And I was just curious because with the COVID and everything, I didn't know if she's been able to prepare meals and how that's been and if she's got some of the favorites for the guys this year. You know, and I'm a big fan of her cooking too, by the way. Like, I, I bad that there's number one fan. You know, it's funny. We have not, and, and really it has been because of all these changes this year. Um, and Maria has actually been back in Philly quite a bit taking care of her parents. So it's been a different year. And I had the whole COVID thing and bringing things into the building. We weren't able to do it. And it's a, it's a part of what Maria and I do that I really enjoy because it, it kind of makes her a part of, you know, our unit. And I know the guys... Uh, really enjoy it. So hopefully, you know, when we get past all these protocols, we can pick that back up again. Because I know Chris, he misses his meatballs, and they love the banana pudding. Antonio Pierce, we won the Super Bowl in 07, and the first thing Antonio said to Maria was, it was the banana pudding. It was the banana pudding. So they appreciate it, I appreciate it, and hopefully we can get back to doing it next year. Thanks, Coach. We'll go last one to Allie Trost. Go ahead, Allie. Hey, Coach, I was actually about to ask about Marie's famous meatballs, but my other question for you, and I hope you're doing well, and I hope her parents are doing well, too. Um, Legereus Sneed, you've talked a lot about his focus, um, especially leading up into the season, and, and he's clearly impressed in, in ways that maybe were unexpected you know, for the fans and, and media, but not maybe unexpected for you all. How have you seen his confidence, though, progress? I talked with his defensive yeah. back. Louisiana Tech, Jeff Burris, about about that. And, and that was something he said that he had to work on. So I'm curious, now that he's 
at the, the professional level and has found that success, yeah. how's the confidence progress to you? You know, it feels real good to me. Um, and I think part of that comes with the guys around him. And again, I go back to Tyron. Uh, he was great when LJ first got here. And, you know, like any rookie, you come in and you don't know what to expect. And he's out there playing nickel and he's got a couple of, excuse me, he's out there playing corner. And he's got a couple of other guys out there that have played quite a bit in this league. And yet he just put his nose to the grindstone. Um, like any of these young guys, we had to knock a couple of bad habits out of him. But he, you know, he, he embraced it. Um, then the injury happened and it kind of set him back a little bit. I felt real bad for him because he was having a heck of a year. But during the injury, he showed that he is, uh, is mature beyond his years in the work that he did while he was injured. To ask him to look at a position that he had not done in training camp and then be ready to do that when he was healthy, to me, is really, really impressive. I mean, he's learning. Even now, he's learning on the go. Uh, we're having to live with some mistakes that he just hasn't seen uh, just because he doesn't have the volume of reps. But I'm really proud of him. We're glad we got him. I know the guys enjoy having him out there. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to him being out there on Sunday. And hopefully he can continue to be confident and make some plays for us. Thank you, Coach. That's all for today. Okay, you got it. Appreciate it. Hey, so that was uh, Chiefs and former New York Giants uh, defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuolo. The 2007 Super Bowl game, they actually it was really 2008 Super Bowl game that they referred to, I was at. And on Zenny 62 YouTube, um, you can watch the final drive. The Giants executed under Eli Manning to score and win that game, which I took from the third deck 50-yard line at the Arizona Glendale Stadium that I don't know what they're calling it. I forgot what they're calling it now that the uh, Arizona Cardinals had built and used. Um, so right now it is 12.02. That ends the media availability for right now. We'll be back in an hour with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that ends this broadcast. I want to thank you very much. Subscribe to Zenny62, bookmark oaklandnewsnow.com. If you have any requests, please email. Thank you. Oh, and uh, by the way, that email, if you have any requests, is this. Zenny62.com. Uh, there, okay. There. Zinni at Zinni62.com. Thank you.